Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. You're mighty, Father. Father, you are the great I am, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the almighty God, King of kings, Lord of lords. Father, we love you. We honor you. We magnify you with our worship and with our praise, God, for you're worthy of all the honor, all the glory. Father, we honor you, Father, for you are so good and your mercy endureth forever and ever. Father God, we enter your presence with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise, God. Hallelujah. For you're worthy, you're worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for your Son that saved our souls, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit that equipped us, Father, to walk in the ways that you will have us to walk in as we walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Father, for allowing your comforting spirit to help comfort us, God, in troublesome times, God, that this world will allow us to experience, God, realizing, God, we can do all things through you that gives us strength. Thank you, Father. Nothing is impossible for those who believe in you, God. Thank you, Father. Father, give us the capacity, Father, to continue to walk by faith and let our faith be activated by works. And the works is to believe in the one who sent, who you have sent. Hallelujah. You have sent your only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those who believe, sign miracles and wonders will follow. Follow the work as we, Father, follow the voice of Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For greater works shall we do. Hallelujah. We ask, Father, Lord, that you activate and give us the ability to work, God. Work our faith by believing in the one whom you sent, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to your holy name, God. So, Father, all of you, none of me, we ask, God, that you give us a, a power, powerful word, God, a word that will ignite us to walk in the power and the newness of you, God, like never before, God. For those who are watching, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you bless them, bless their spiritual endeavors as they trust and believe on you, God, in whatever capacity they are trusting in you, whether it be their jobs, whether it be their school, whether it be their uh, relationships, bless them, God, like only you can, God, as they trust and rely on you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, increase their love like never before, God. Father, as we say yes to your will and yes to your way, we ask God that you give us a word, God, a fresh manna from heaven fresh manna from heaven that we may eat and let it be let your word be a part of us that we may walk out your word God and manifest your glory in this earth as it is in heaven hallelujah for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen and amen God bless you God bless you I love you hope you're having a wonderful day on this I think this was a holiday, Labor Day. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Labor Day, when I think about Labor Day, I think about we need to labor and love. For love is patient. Love is kind. Let's, let's ponder on love is patient. Love is pine, kind. Hallelujah. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long-suffering. Hallelujah. Love does not keep wrong, keep um, a note of wrong doings, you know. But let's focus on love is patient. Love is kind. First of all, love is God. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting, when you think of the word everlasting, you think of 
abundance. And when you think of love as patient, love as kind, God want our patience to be made perfect. Perfected patience. For God said, I am perfect. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. The only way we can be perfected in our patience is to go through the suffering and endure the suffering, knowing that God is with us and God is working it out for our good. In spite of what we think is bad, in spite of what we think is not going in our favor, God still favors us and he chastised those whom he loved. So if you are going through some hard times, God is allowing these things to happen to prepare you to be strong, to endure, really realizing that only way we can be strong and endure is trusting and believing that God gives us the ability to do it. Do what? Forgive those people that trespassed against us. God give us the strength. He, and he gives us this, this power to keep moving in spite of what we're going through. Obstacles will come. The enemy is walking around to and fro, seeking who he may devour. He's like a roaring lion. But the Bible tells us, resist the enemy and he will flee. Resist giving him so much attention. Resist giving all the opposition and the setbacks so much attention. Because when we keep our mind stayed on Christ Jesus, we will realize that things that is going on in our life, it's a reason for it. So the setbacks is necessarily, it may be necessarily a set up. A setback could be like a set up, like the slingshot of David with that Goliath situation. The situation may be occurring in your life, may be biggest. Goliath may be intimidating as a giant, but just as God is giving David, young King David, the ability to utilize what he had in his hand, that slingshot, and he pulled it back. And you may be feeling like, man, God is pulling you back because he's setting you up. Hallelujah. To prepare you further and, and, and place you where he know you deserve to be placed for his glory. Even though you may not understand, it may feel like opposition. It may feel like heart, heartaches and hard, hard times. But that setback is just like a, he propelling you. He just bringing it back, bringing it back to set you up, to prepare you to go further than you ever have ever had the capacity to go had you not been held back. It's like a slingshot. The farther you pull it back, the more powerful that rock goes out when it once once God let that thing go. See, God is preparing you in this season. So all the stuff that you're going through and all the stuff that God has brought you through and you feel like you're toiling, you feel like you're toiling and nothing is coming from it. God is faithful. So on this Labor Day, remember, it's a labor of love because he chastised those whom he loved. He's given you the ability to endure the task and the responsibility that was predestined for you to glorify him. So what I'm saying, process before progress. Process before progress. Process make great progress. 
Hallelujah. So love is patient. If you can be patient, God won't show patience to be perfected and be mature. So when things come your way, you can say, you know, just like King David said, you know, I, I've been in the wilderness and I was tending to the flock of sheep and the responsibility that God has given to me that may not seem so great, but a bear came to try to snatch up or attack the sheep, but God gave me the ability to defeat the bear. A lion also came in the wilderness and it was like, oh my God, but God gave him the ability to defeat the lion. This was proge pros pros process for progress. He was going through a process time in the wilderness. You may be feeling like you're going through a process time in the wilderness, but trust and believe that God will finish what he started in you. Hallelujah. So let God perfect that patience to the point where this is how you can tell your patience has been matured. You know when things happen abruptly without your knowledge of your knowledge or, or you knowing about things and it may come as a surprise. It may seem like a, a problem, whether it be a bill, whether it be um, something, you know, uh, drastical, you know, when it whether it be a family um, member or you having bad news from the doctor. Whatever the situation may be, when you don't freak out, when you don't retaliate in the flesh, but you trust and believe that God is going to work it out for your good. You stand on Romans 8. It's all things working together for the good of those. And it don't make sense to you. It really don't make sense. How could this work together for my good? But this situation seemed to be so bad. God knows. Because it's some things that may be coming ahead that may be a little harder. And God is teaching us in this season, if God brought us through this, he can bring us through that. Then a situation may come up like a Goliath situation. And David reminded himself how God was with him in the process and it gave him the ability to prog progress and, 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 and defeat the obstacle that seemed to be so big in front of him. God is preparing us to be able to defeat the obstacles that lie ahead of us, realizing that it's not in our strength, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So on Labor Day, I want you to labor, <clears throat> excuse me, labor in love, labor, labor in God, trusting that God know what's best for you. Hallelujah. Love is patient. And love is kind. Kind. Hmm. Kind is a powerful word as well. Kind also means generosity. God wants us to be generous with being kind toward one another. See, the enemy will use these obstacles so we can be not kind, but frustrated. Be very temperamental, be very upset, be argumentative. But the Bible is saying, be angry, but seeing not. Things will occur that will tempt us to be angry. But 
as we operate and we reflect and remember what God's word says when it comes to love and the description, what love is, love is patience. You know what? I'm not going to retaliate in this manner. Even though every fiber of my being wants to retaliate in a manner out of my emotion, out of my flesh. But I know God can defeat this giant. And I know that God, once he starts something, he'll finish it. And I know everything is going to work out for the good, even though it don't look so good. So we have to trust God. See, the enemy would tempt us to bring things in our way so we can get out of the character. See, love is a, is, 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 is a powerful mechanism that God has given us. It's the ability to walk in the newness of who we were called to, to, to walk in, which is Christ. Hallelujah. So God wants us to be generous. But if, if we have so much bitterness, it's hard to be generous when you're bitter. It's hard to be generous when it comes to showing generosity of kindness when you have unforgiveness in your heart. So we have to go through all the stuff we go through knowing that God is working it out for our good, for those who are called and those who love the Lord. You are called by God and you love the Lord and God love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Love is kind. Kind is not just an act of behavior because sometimes people can pretend like they're kind. But God look at the heart. When we know that God has been good to us, we express that goodness and that generosity of love that has been given to us. We share that with others. How can you be kind in abundance? Well, it's easy to be kind to those who are kind to you. That's not abundance. But when you want to operate in generosity and let love be perfected, because perfect love casts out all fear, you be like, you know what? I don't even want to, I, I don't want to be bothered with this person because this person offended me. That's not the way to perfect love. The, the way to perfect love is to realize and remember that love is giving you the ability to be patient so you can be perfected when it comes to exercising and showing and displaying the love of God that was given to you and you share that with others. Hallelujah. So kind, kind means generosity. Be generous with kindness. Be generous. So, like I said, it's easy to be kind to those who are kind to you, but when people do you wrong, when you feel that you have been treated unjustly or unfair, can you still be kind? Can you still show the generosity of love? Meaning, loving your enemies is kind. The fact that you can love those who show no love towards you is generous. Once we come to that point of praying for our enemies and praying that God bless them and open their eyes that they may see the mistakes or the wrongdoings that they have done like we have done in the past and God has forgiven us. We want God love to be extended in abundance to them. It should overflow as the love was given to us. It should overflow from us to them. And we should not hold it back, but we should be generous. So once we say, listen, I don't know what you're going through, but I just want to let you know I forgive you. 
and I understand we all have bad days. And I just want to let you know, I was once there. I've had frustration and aggravation attack me, but God still loved me. He still gave me grace. And he sent someone to show love towards me, even though I feel I didn't deserve it. And I just want to let you know, I understand. And I want you to know that the same God that loved me loved you so much. In spite of anything that you feel you incapable of doing, I want you to know God love never fails. And he can give you the capacity to do things you never thought, dreamed, or imagined if you put your trust in him. And I'm just here to let you know I love you. And I forgive you. And you don't hold bitterness, you don't hold grudges, and you give them a smile. And you walk away. And if you're not in a vicinity, just don't ponder resentment in your heart. Honestly, go to the Father and ask God to bless them so mightily that they can say, Lord, I know you love me. Bless them so much that they ain't even got time to deal with no crazy jealousy or insecurity. So they can come back to God with a humble heart and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Continue to be my Lord and Savior because I know that your love is real because in spite of me, you still love me. You still show kindness to me. See, God reigns on the just and the unjust. His sun shines on the just and the unjust. His love is abundant, is generous. So we, as his children, must exercise and, and, and distribute the same generosity that has been extended to us, to others, to each other. So listen, if we have been selfish with our generosity of being kind towards someone, you know, let's repent. Repent. Don't be afraid of the word repent. Repent is just like charging your battery so you can go forward and be pleasing before God. Repenting is a beautiful thing because repenting is a, a new start to be humble, to say, Lord, I want to start all over again. I messed up and I realize I can't do it without you. So please forgive me. I turn from these wicked ways of thoughts and actions and deeds and I repent and I seek your face, meaning I seek your way, how you want me to conduct myself in this matter, how you want me to treat these people, how you want me to think, how you want me to act. And God say, you know what? If you turn to me and turn from your wicked ways, then I will bless you. So listen, this is some good news. I just want to encourage you. I know it seemed like it, I've been, you know, I'm just walking by faith. I want to encourage you to let you know that labor and love. Now I know that may not have nothing to do with Labor Day, but I want to just give you something to think about on this Labor Day. Don't forget to labor, work, work, work by believing in God son Jesus Christ believing that he is the way he is the truth he's the life believe in him people will not labor in nothing they don't believe labor knowing that you know what I'm gonna be nice to you even though you hadn't really been nice to me but my niceness is not contingent on you being nice to me, but rather my act of niceness and kindness towards you is because God showed kindness towards me when I act just like you in the past. So let's um, remind ourselves what God has brought us through so we can be humble and let's pray for those who uh, did anything wrong or said anything bad about us. Let's not get upset because the enemy wants you to get upset. Because if you get upset, then you disqualify yourself, so to speak, because you, you're operating in anger. Now you're blind with sin and you want to 
get even and all that type of crazy stuff. And you, and that's a trick of the devil. And, and why you all upset, the devil laughing. No. Ponder, say la, be still, pray. Ask God direction, what to do in this situation. Then God will remind you, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus say about the situation? And you humbly obey the word of God. And you move forward in doing what God tell us to do through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. That's how we become mature. That's how our patience endure heartache and hard times. That's how we have compassion and empathy and sympathy towards other people that's going through situations similar. You know what? Well, we've been there. We see why this person is acting out, but we see why this person is hurt. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing more crazy than dealing with the spirit of rejection from those who you really love. That's a very interesting tool that the enemy used to try to make us feel, what did we do? What could we have done? And it make you look at yourself and blame yourself. And perhaps you could have some type of blame towards it, but self-condemnation don't help nothing or nobody. We have to say, listen, yeah, this person may not like me. This person may not want me. But Lord, you say you would never leave me. Neither will you forsake me. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be bitter. But Lord, I just pray that you bless that person and make them better. Let them feel your love. Let them feel a sense of your favor and your grace. Let them know, Father, that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. Hallelujah. Because a lot of times when we feel rejected and we feel that we're not getting treated the way we deserve to be treated, <laughs> I really believe that God allow us to feel that way because that's how he feel. He said, here it is. I'm, I woke you up this morning. God is saying, I've started you on your way, but you don't even want to kneel down and pray. You don't even want to say thank you. You don't want to have a close relationship with me. And here it is. I am. I am with you. Yeah, they left you. They forsake you. But here I am. And God don't want us to put nobody or nothing before him. He said in his first his first commandment, that you have no other gods before me. We are not to idolize anything or anybody or put anything or anybody before the Lord. So I just want to remind you, as I remind myself, if you feel rejected, that's just an indication so you can get back in your position that you allowed the enemy to maneuver you away, which is from the presence of God. You long for attention so much from people but did not long for the acceptance and the attention of God. And it will make you miserable because people will never satisfy you. But God will when we long for his presence. Then God will heal that relationship if it's his will. But most of all, he will take away that bitterness and that pain from you. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you be very generous this Labor Day. Labor and love. And remember, love is patient and love is kind. Amen. God bless you.